Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey. Going to look at one of Jack Kirby's uh, first issue of The Demon from DC Comics in the 70s. But before we dive into this, Ed, bring us up to date on Red Room. Two issues in the wild as we speak, man, with the third on the way in about four weeks as of this recording. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. And you see it right there on these <laughs> like little uh, online chat room streams. Uh, every issue is a completely self-contained story, so I uh, feel no obligation to uh, scoop them all up. Uh, if you see one, get one. Obviously, I want you to check it all out, but they're all self-contained, unlike those Marvel DC comics of today. Uh, order, pre-order them at your local comic shop or the Fantagraphics website. Or if you want to read them uh, ahead of time, before they hit paper, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks to get you the archive there. And uh, new strips go out every Tuesday. And if you are, you're a drawer, if you're a maker, send something into the Gore Gallery, man. Might make, uh, might make print. Yeah, that art, the art section in the back, very nice. Nice touch. How about you, Tom? Where can people find more of your work? Um, you can uh, check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. If you don't have a comic store near you, you can uh, go directly to the publisher, uh, 10 Speed Press, and order a copy. It's the life story of Jack Kirby. I also did a um, uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design, uh, which is the life story of the Fantastic Four. And you can check out the comics I'm currently working on at patreon.com. Just search Tom Scholey. And I have a YouTube show called Total Recall Show. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art and how I make the comics that I make, including Street Angel. This is a recent upload uh, PDF that, that patrons can download, which is a script from the Street Angel gang. It basically shows exactly how I make the comics I make, starting with my first draft uh, on the script. Followed by pencils or roughs, pretty common the way people work, but uh, I did make this as a zine years ago and decided it would be a good PDF bonus on there. So you can find this and a lot more on patreon.com slash jimrug. So today we're going to dive into Jack Kirby's Demon. Uh, this is a series that starts after Fourth World kind of uh, starts to well, it's, fade out. It, um it he's, he starts working on it while the fourth world is still going. It's it's towards the end of the fourth world. Jack Kirby doesn't know it's towards the end of the fourth world, so he gives this his like full uh, energy and full attention, like he does every. This is before Jack Kirby gets all the wind sucked out of him, which you'll see in like subsequent issues. But yeah, at, at this point, fourth world still plugging. Maybe he's hearing rumblings from Carmine that like, oh, you know, we're getting some preliminary numbers. Maybe you can boost things up. But he ha it, it has, we're not at the point of cancellation. Like he hasn't had his heart broken yet. This is a DC. pretty, uh, a pretty wild title. You think of comics in the seventies from Marvel and DC still, you know, firmly rooted in superheroes and comics for kids, the demon, you know, with these reds and yellows, like this is sending a, a very different message from this cover. Can't, that, ha can't have Frankensteins, can't have uh, vampires, can't have werewolves. But you could have a demon. Pretty well, graphic. Kind I mean, of a cool cover. R right around the time Kirby goes to DC, uh, the the comics code gets revised. So you start seeing the doors for horror start to open up. And and uh, around this time, you know, Carmine Infantino, like at DC, they were looking at horror and um, seeing it as like, hey, you know, there's 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 some potential here. We they, we think maybe this might even be the next big thing. Maybe maybe superheroes are kind of. On, on the downturn and maybe this is it and and so you know he he asked kirby to come up with with a horror book i i think maybe swamp thing might have even you know come out in some form at at this point too and, and showed some early promise demon just seems so graphic to me like just the name yeah demon. yeah well you're you're asking for trouble like you're asking for uh you know little mom and pop stores to refuse to carry it do you know if that happened um i i i don't i don't know for a fact i know that um, a lot of uh, retailers objected to the title New Gods. I didn't hear that about the demon, but I, I don't see why not. You know, if, if, if I didn't even make that connection yeah. of those two being uh, hey, thematically hey, related. What's wrong title. with the old god? Why do you need to have a new one? <laughs> <laughs> so set in kind of a medieval time, at least the origin, the backstory here, castles, yeah. fantasy, uh, kind of fun to see Kirby handling some of that. And it makes sense, I guess, when you think about the god, New Gods, and some of that kind of mythological storytelling, you get a, you get some crossover, some similarity with this. Yeah, he's crea creating like just another massive mythology, and he makes references to the old gods. And it's not clear whether that's like you know 
specifically tying it to the new gods, or, or if it's just sort of like the sort of Lovecraft, you know, sort, or even like you know the, the the gods of antiquity kind kind of thing. But but it's in there. There there was like like a penciled version of the cover where it said. Um, you know, fourth world of horror or fourth world of the weird. So it would have been part of his fourth world line. Not clear whether it would be specifically, you know, tied to it in terms of continuity. But but he approaches it with the same, uh, like, gusto that he did the New Gods, where it's like, I'm not just giving you a new character. I'm giving you, a, like, a whole new setting, a whole new world that I can just continue to pull from. We did Eternals, and... Uh... You know, just marveling at his issue ones, his setups, all of that stuff. How he creates, you know, this just a just very clear stakes for for all of the char characters. And we have our villain here, Morgane Le Fay. Uh, she she wants Merlin's book, man. You know that that thing holds holds power, and Merlin doesn't want her to have it. Like having these very simple, clear conflicts really are missing in a lot of comics. Uh, but Kirby just he's got a couple couple issue ones under his belt at this point, man, and is just setting things up perfectly. Yeah, and I feel like this is one of his great issue ones, and uh, that double-page splash might be, you know, his best double-page splash ever. Like, that's pretty compelling. Uh, this uh, battering ram going, like, in 3D and uh, just really, like, look at that. That's that's a stunt. Like, this is this is primetime Kirby. He's giving it his all. And, the, and, and I think that Commandy number one and maybe Commandy number two were also like still like this done under the wire before the and, and that it was the strength of those comics that helped convince Carmine Infantino like hey we like this new stuff you're doing even better let's get rid of the dead weight and and cancel you know new gods and and forever people and do these and and not realizing the effect that it would have you know on Kirby that that this comic would not be done at this level if you're you know canceling right. his his other comics to to accommodate it. Are you guys old enough to remember that uh that game set called like Castles and Catapults? Or crossbows something? and Catapults. Crossbows, yeah. Crossbows great. And catapults, yeah. Man. Loved it. That shit was so fun. Yeah. I have no memory of that. <laughs> the commercial, everything yeah, it was awesome. And yeah, Merlin has his Eternity book which I I think might be this the book that like one of the characters in uh, the Sandman, in like Neil Gaiman's Sandman, he has like this book. That yeah, Destiny. Destiny. Yeah, I, I think that might be it. And and I know like Alan Moore has referenced some of these in uh, his um, this Life is, Felt verse. This this is <laughs> this is spank material to those British dudes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Finally, something they can relate to. All this King Arthur and, and wizards and stuff. And and again, like Kirby, like consciously and clearly pulled it from. Hal Foster's Prince Valiant, and, and and it's and then you know it's kind of famously the demon design is you know it, it's like a disguise that Prince Valiant put on to like pretend he was a demon. And the setup, of course, is him being sent through time to avoid uh, Morgan Le Fay. Yeah, like just he he gets to be he's incognito. He's like a sleeper cell for Merlin. He he's just going to disguise him as a human, and um, like reading this. I, I think it's a, it's supposed to be a surprise. Like, we're not supposed to know that this guy here, like, we haven't seen his face or anything. We're not supposed to know that that's this guy, that this is Jason uh, Blood. Now, spoiler. Exactly. Like, uh, I think, like, we've all read plenty of Jason Blood demon appearances, of, you know, whether it's in Alan Moore or in, like, the uh, the, the Bray Fogel Batmans or, or what, you know, like, we've seen him before, so we know that. But looking at this as, like, just, like, a new comic on the stands, I think that's supposed to be a surprise twist later on in the issue that like oh wait a second this guy who's trying to learn about this demon is the demon i like this a midnight classic by jack kirby uh royer of course on the inks inks and letters there beautiful lettering and ambitious lettering with that with that uh old english and everything and this uh yarva etrigan demonicus this is from like a little page of the book of the Eternity book that Merlin gives him. Basically, like, here's your page. You know, here's here's the page with your story in it. Some strange uh, color hold there on an eyeball. <laughs> yeah. I'm always surprised by those choices, but interesting color blending on the, on the panel above it. I love this kind of stuff. So graphic, kind of like, uh, you know, pre-Mike Mignola, where it's like the, the shadows are broken into such abstract shapes that they kind of, like... The, the illusion works, but then it also draws attention to, to like, the mark-making. Yeah, great perspective. 
which is it's interesting to see this applied to like a horror uh subject because you know like up up until Mignola that wasn't really like a common thing you, you usually horror would be a lot more noodly yes. a lot more like chiaroscura you see the chiaroscura like in the in the folds and stuff uh i was noticing a lot of uh kniff uh, mm -hmm. on some of these pages and stuff this face back here is real fun and i mean kirby's face. kirby's done more than his share of com horror comics like in in the you know 50s and, and whatnot so this is a whole gear it's just he hasn't really had the opportunity to employ it in a while and it feels just more ma like about magic or something then it doesn't feel like horror yeah, I mean, Kirby never really warmed to, like, horror, like, like the, you know, gore or, uh, like, real terror. Like, he, he was always more kind of, like, you know, monsters and, and like, uh, you know, like the old horror movies and stuff. You know, atmosphere and, and, and magic and whatnot. Yeah, the, the sci-fi, you know, like the, the sci-fi magic parallels, I feel like you see in some of the graphic approach. And it, it, it's closer to like what those guys would have called like weird. And, and this would be the example where he just had this whole exchange with, with that old dude, wakes up after a little battle and the place has been a shambles for years and years. You know, like that's what those old guys would have called uh, just, just simply weird. Mm -hmm. And that would be like the end of the story. Right yeah. There, you know? Yeah, the twist. You wake up and the thing's in ruin. It's been in ruins this whole time. This Gollum thing is like a real interesting. Uh, this to me, like s something's happening with like the way that plates are sliding or whatever. Like this always struck me as like a just like an almost photographic image, even though it is just it's like Kirby eyeballing stuff and just drawing stuff out of his mind. Like there's there's I I really like it. I just just as like a, an isolated image. The shadows on there, the the grass, the light, the color choices. Yeah, it's a striking panel, but it's not hard to find a couple of those kind of panels on every page or every spread. It feels like you'll get a few of those, especially at this time period. Now we got to introduce some new characters, man. Yeah, this is his his like extended cast, and this is like the the uh, Gotham City Gentlemen's Club that that you know has their little like judo room that they, they, they practice at. <laughs> Karate. And his his buddy his buddy Harry kind of I, I I feel like he's like specifically referencing some character actor like my guess is Jack Warden but I feel like you know like there's all these like Kirby characters that are like you you know who he's like you know there's some guy from old movies he's there looking was, at the, you know we, we got to look through that Thor artist edition at one point and there was that one villain that in the margin notes Kirby just kept calling him Vincent Price yeah. He around that time he had like four different Vincent Price characters in, like in in various comics he uh, he like he was on his radar. There was like a Fantastic Four Vincent Price, a Thor Vincent Price. It's such a ridiculous uh, collection of supporting characters around. It, it really is. A, I mean, it looks like toys. Like you know, you got to have. It, you know, it's it's also like. Um, yeah, extremely colorful. Mike Mike costumes. Tyson Punch Out villains or something like just one from every country. And the rock man, like, just like, what is that? It doesn't go anywhere. It's just like he's a messenger or something. Yeah, he shows. I mean, he it's it's he's like the border guardian. He uh, the the call to adventure, um, and he's he's doing like the the thing thing of like here's a big stone guy wearing a trench coat, and, and that's his disguise. I love. She's like. I knew it, Harry. This has turned into a Halloween party. It's like, we could go back a couple pages to where the <laughs> Halloween party starts here. Yeah, when a guy starts calling himself Sereno de Bergerac. <laughs> She's a little bit late with her announcement. Bridge too far. When a rock dude shows up. I feel like that's when the party's getting good. <laughs> I love these four panel pages. Like mm -hmm. uh, we said it before, Like that—that that is a hard box to compose an image inside of. And, and I don't know the... The sort of academic reason why, but but it just doesn't come up often. I mean, I think like like to me, it just makes the it, it doesn't have like a flow. It doesn't have like the reading experience the way like you know three panels or a wide. Pa it doesn't. You know it doesn't it's because you're losing your center of your page, yeah. and it creates like a real dissonance around that page. It's just everything is vying for its own. They're all competing. There's no mm -hmm. hierarchy as a result. You know, no flow. Yeah. Um, and Joe Sinnott would say about. Jack Kirby, like every panel was a poster, and I think you really see that in these, you know, four panel pages. 
Yeah, that's a great shot. I love that castle. Feels like a really fun, uh, f fun setup for mm -hmm. what you're drawing there. And also, you know, Mike Mignola feels like he'd be right at home in that panel. Yeah, I feel like Hellboy could have almost like began life as like a demon pitch, and then he's like, "Hey, this is actually like kind of interesting. Maybe I'll you know make my own thing out of it." This is like another one where just like the play of the color and the line and the and the plates and the paper just makes like a just like a really, you know, uh, compelling, engaging, like almost photographic image. The the face is carved into like those. Uh, pillar kind of things. Really nice detail. I love this panel as well, and that character's like head design, I think, is pretty striking. Yeah, I love the color in these. Kirby was not a fan of the kind of color that they gave him at DC. Uh, I think it's great, but like his solution was to, he he told Mike Royer not to ink a lot of these borders so that it would just necessitate white space. The colors That's would be forced to leave some, some white space in the image. I never heard that before, but it always stands out with his DC work from this era is these kind of like unusual shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting that that was a calculated move on his part. Yeah, and may maybe maybe that is what makes the color work. Maybe the color would be too oppressive if that were filled in with like another secondary color. It definitely adds a nice page layout and it does make mm -hmm. this era feel kind of distinct. So it works. I think it works in several levels. And here we go, man. The moment we've kind of been waiting for, right, mm -hmm. is the transformation, the the uh, reawakening of this demon uh, across the centuries. Yeah, I, I always love when Kirby does these sort of like almost like animation kind of things. This also has a lot of those blacks that you were talking about a few pages ago where they become these very abstract shades. They kind of work well with a monster character. Um, it all fits. Mm -hmm. it, all, it all goes really well there. But more of an origin, I think, issue than some of his first issues. It's well, pretty straightforward in terms of an origin of this character. Yeah, but still, like, be, because the the, um, the thing of, of it being Jason Blood being the demon isn't spelled out, I think gives it, like, a little more of, like, an air of mystery than a, than a typical, like, straight origin does. And, and yeah, like, like, a more typical Kirby thing might even be, like, the story would continue. Like, like he'd turn into the monster and then you'd get... But, I feel like this this is a lot closer to like the era, you know, we've been living in of like, you know, pacing something and, and like you're you're kind of almost forced to get issue two. Right. In, in in a fun way. In a great not in a like, oh I feel ripped off, but it's like you get this complete story that's sort of bookended by the main character and then it's like, you know, you know what's coming when you see that. So that reference to um how Foster and Prince Valiant do you think Kirby sees that as like this is an obvious thing that everybody who loves comics will know or do you think it was like oh nobody will know this it'll be kind of a cool I, like I don't think he was trying to hide it I think he did it to entertain himself and it was his own personal joke but like this this is like one of the more like glaring and obvious examples and and that's that's the that's the way um you know I've I've seen it reported by you know like uh Mark Evanier and and Steve Sherman it, just that like to, to Kirby, it was like a joke. And and to him, it was almost like, um, you know, Carmine keeps coming to him for new concepts. And it's like, you know, come on, like, like you're treating me like I'm like a, you know, like a, a slot machine or something, you know, like, like, you know, you, you're not asking anybody else to keep c coming up with one concept after another. So I'm going to just rip something off like everybody else does, you know? And so that, you know, he, and, and again, like, this is pretty far, for, like, like the synthesis that Kirby puts it through is pretty far from the 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 Hal Foster stuff, but it is like obvious. Like, and he you know grabbed the book right off his shelf, and you know because he had all these like bound. Uh, I don't know if they were like custom bound or no, whatever. Nostalgia okay. Press would uh, would reprint that that okay. stuff. That they were like some of the early reprint people, like back into the sixties. And, and yeah, those were uh, some of the few comics you could find in my public library. Mm -hmm. Were like the Prince Valiant reprints, and it was always pretty cool. Like, I mean, I, I have. Should I just go grab the book? Yeah, real do quick? It. Yeah. Like it's just volume one. Yeah, I mean that you know that's that's one of the more like you know sort of compelling things about this comic is just that direct you know like he, like this is almost like a fan comic you know like he's like oh well, let me tell you the story of Merlin's demon like you know that's that the way he draws Camelot the castle is you know pretty pretty much the, like it's a Kirby version of the right. the Hal Foster Camelot I find it interesting because as a fan of like um B movies and exploitation yeah. movies and stuff of the 70s 
there was so much religion worked into those horror movies of that time period. And I don't know if it's because Exorcist was such a yeah. huge success, if it was like, you know, culture changing at that point and maybe moving away from, say, the Judeo Christian uh, heritage of, of, of the 50s, let's the, say. The, but it was God just, is dead it on the cover of Time magazine. You know? Yes, yeah. exactly. If you get like those compilations of those movies, uh, you'll see so many of them that are just obsessed with. Yeah, so here we go. Period. First first appearance, Jack Kirby's demon. Uh, uh, Prince Valiant takes like a goose and, and stretches uh, it it on his face, on, like like almost like taking the Thanksgiving turkey and making a monster mask out of the it. The feet are the ears. <laughs> <laughs> and and look, there he is. Like Kirby must have felt like it, you know, like he was really you know getting getting away with something. Yeah, like, there's really... some there's some cool demon stuff, but it's it's pretty quick. It's it's kind of like when you discover that flat top was. In Dick Tracy was a story that happened for like two months or something, but it like resonated yes, right. for generations. Like you know, this showed up. Yeah, for two seconds. Like you know, maybe maybe a month worth of strips. You know, four strips or something. I think there might may flip the page. Maybe there's one more or something. But I, I guess not, man. I guess yeah, the money shot was that, that first one. So uh, it was that striking a piece. That uh, you know, oh, that's that's the one. That's the one that's super cool. Yeah, and just just that that whole like you know mythology of Arthur, like he's he's pull, uh, Kirby's pulling from because that's that's the backdrop of the demon is all the, like that's the new Genesis or the Asgard of the demon comic is is the the Camelot stuff. And of course, you get your Kirby uh, intro letter, which is one of the things I love in these all of these seventies issue ones kind of fun yeah i was trying to read it and see because he makes reference to the fourth world characters and i i was wondering if like okay he drew the issue but maybe by the time he's writing this text piece which might be like the last thing you do before the the, the comic goes to press maybe it has been canceled like it's i couldn't i couldn't quite find like a thing that you know specifically says you know it got canceled like he talks about like moving on and new stories and whatever but but no smoking gun so Jack Kirby's Demon Number One, relatively relatively successful character, I think at DC's had several series and and you know continues to make appearances to this day. So uh, of all these characters that Kirby does introduce in the '70s, I mean most of them do continue on in the DC universe. Yeah, this this comic gets gets canceled, you know, uh, after I think like eighteen, Year and a half or yeah, something. nineteen issues or something. But but obviously the character made an impression. He ends up being. Uh, showing up as like a, like a backup in like some Batman comics and then and then yeah uh, at least three volumes of series and, and Matt and, Wagner has that cool run yeah Alan Moore gets a hold of him in Swamp Thing like as a, as a side character one really of my first comics was the Alan Moore Swamp Thing like that two parter yeah. but it was like the first part with the demon and talk about something that a six year old's not quite <laughs> able to process correctly like terrifying but uh, kind of fun one one thing with with this story is like. It kind of reminds me of Thor in that your main character, like the demon is the real thing. The demon is real. And then the the human identity is actually just like a spell. Like he's not even a real, like he's a construct. So like, and, and that that's like, you know, Dr. Donald Blake in the Thor comic. So I don't know if like Kirby was trying to say something with that, that like we really are these like monsters or these gods. And then this like sort of civilized face we put on is an artificial construct you know, or if, or if he's just you know making this stuff up as he goes along. <laughs> yeah, there's something in that man. Just like uh, remember the days when you were a little kid and and uh, you're horsing around with your brother and the football accidentally hits mom or something and she turns and she sees red <laughs> and uh, turns into the demon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and mom was just an illusion the whole time. <laughs> the demon was the real thing. Day favors like follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download my hard to find out of print zines and mini comics. You can see a lot of my original art, see how I make comics like Street Angel, Octobriana, and much more at patreon.com slash jimrug. Uh, you can learn about the origin of the origin of the demon in Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. Uh, learn all about the guy who made this comic and, and many others. Uh, you can check out my Patreon at, at patreon.com. Just search Tom Scholey. And you can check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics are in the wild. Two issues on the stands as we speak with new issues every four weeks. Uh, 
get to put on your pull list at your local comic shop or order pre-order the comics uh, through the Fantagraphics website. Hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. That's where you read the comics ahead of time before they hit paper. You can get to all these links in my link tree in the description below this video. What else, Jimmy? Join the uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's fun reading this book, man. This produced comic, but let's go sneak off cam, take a look at the pencils compared to the inks. Jimmy, give them the Morrison orders. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.